Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another eldritch episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This show is sponsored in part by Patreon supporters. If you would like to vote in monthly polls to help decide which topics get added to the schedule, you can head over to patreon.com slash marymarvelite and sign up for as little as $1 per month. The link is in the description below. Shuma Gorath is an ancient extra-dimensional being, a demonic entity who is older than the Earth and perhaps even the universe itself. There are many such beings, collectively referred to as the Great Old Ones, but Shuma Gorath is considered one of the most powerful and has been referred to as their master. Virtually omnipotent in his native dimension, Shuma Gorath holds sway over a hundred others. The true nature of his physical form, if any, is unclear, but he typically manifests in physical universes as a tentacled creature of varying size, depending on how much of his essence he is able to squeeze through. Millions of years ago, after the banishment of the Earth's original Elder Gods, but before the Celestial First Host or the rise of humanity, Shumagorath ruled over the planet and feasted on the ancestors of mankind. This was witnessed by a time-traveling Doctor Strange and his rival, Baron Mordo. Those two had traveled to that point in prehistory while pursuing a sorcerer from the 31st century named Sissa Nedge. Uh, this man from the future absorbed mystical energy as he traveled backwards through time with the intent of reaching the beginning of creation and becoming God himself. Doctor Strange was able to convince Sissa Nedge to oppose Shuma Gorath, and so he used his godlike power to put the Old One to sleep and banish him into another dimension. After that, before continuing on his journey backwards through time, Sissa Nedge created an idyllic garden for two of the apes who survived Shuma Gorath's tentacles. As a side note, Sissa Nedge actually succeeded in obtaining godhood, but upon gaining omniscience he determined that time must play out as it already had, and so the universe remained unaltered by his apotheosis. As time moved forward again, Sissa Nedge reversed his name to become known as Genesis, and Strange and Mordo were returned to their proper place in time. But the things that he did as he traveled backwards through time remained, and so Shuma Gorath was banished and slept for millions of years. The demon god eventually awakened and manifested on Earth once again after the rise of humanity, but before the Great Cataclysm. During this time, he fed on blood sacrifices both on the battlefield and from ritual slaughter in his name. However, at that time, Shuma Gorath was not the kind of god or demon to broker deals with mortals, and so any priest who attempted to gain his favor was struck down as well. Then, 21,000 years ago, men cried out to a newly risen storm god named Krom. And so Krom guided a shaman of his own into an unnatural tempest. There, the shaman found three iron-bound books created by magic in an age before mankind made books of their own. The shaman read aloud from the books one after the other until Shuma Gorath struck him down with an energy blast from atop his mountain perch. However, the spell had already been called, and from the books, Krom summoned forth a flaming cloud which enveloped the Old One. That manifestation of Shuma Gorath became imprisoned within the mountain, which would then become known as Mount Krom, forever veiled by clouds and lightning. Time rolled on, and he remained entrapped for several millennia, during which time the earth-shaking event known as the Great Cataclysm occurred and the seemingly indestructible ironbound books of Shuma Gorath changed hands over the generations. Around the year 10,000 BCE, they were obtained by the newlywed sorcerers Kulan Gath and Vamatar. The books indicated that whoever freed the Old One would gain control over him, and so the two gathered their soldiers and traveled to Mount Krom in Samaria. However, Vamatar betrayed Kulan Gath, leading to a battle on the side of the mountain. This dispute was soon settled by Krom himself, who cast down a lightning bolt, causing an avalanche. 
Kulingath and Vamitar were separated from one another, each believing the other to have perished while the books were buried in the rubble. But it seems that Shumagorath found a pawn he could use with Vamitar. About a hundred years later, he manipulated the still youthful sorceress into leading her men in an assault on the Sumerian village of Snowbear. Again, innocent people suffered and died in the name of Shumagorath. Possibly thanks to Krom, these events were witnessed in the dreams of a barbarian who originally came from Snowbear, Conan. It should also be noted that Conan had previously encountered both Kulin Goth and Vamatar, and so the barbarian began his journey back to Sumeria alongside his recent traveling companion, Hob. On the way, Conan was accosted by a seemingly mad elder who warned him to beware the second coming of Shumagorath. He battled the Witchmen and the undead forces of Queen Vamatar, and he again encountered the sorcerer of Stygia, Kulin Goth. Then, as they passed through the city of Numalia, Conan and Hob encountered a blind woman with a pet wolf who also warned people around them of Shumagorath. Before Conan could question the woman, the crowd was stirred by their beloved king passing through. However, it seems that the barbarian may have been touched by Shumagorath himself. He then had another vision of his home burning at the hands of Vamatar's forces. Upon waking from this, he saw the king as the witch queen herself and attempted to slay him. He stopped short of killing the king, coming to his senses before any real harm was done, but Conan was then arrested and imprisoned alongside Hob and the blind woman. However, the woman was actually a disguised Kulin Goth who rescued Conan and freed his companion. Goth proposed that they join forces against their common enemy, Vamatar, and Conan begrudgingly agreed. Furthermore, in the same way that Goth had been magically disguised, the supposed pet wolf was in fact a reanimated flying dinosaur skeleton. Riding atop the skeletal dragon, the three men escaped and reached the snow-capped land of Sumeria. However, Conan was separated from the others when they were attacked again by Vamatar's minions. He made his way back to his village alone, confirming that it was, in fact, destroyed. However, he did soon find a group of survivors and join forces with them. Meanwhile, Hob and Goth made it to the base of Mount Krom before their injured bone dragon finally collapsed. Hob was soon attacked by one of the Witch Queen's undead minions, but Kulin Goth blasted the creature with a magical bolt, causing both it and Hobbs to fall. Goth met with Vamatar on the side of Mount Krom and proposed a truce between them. Meanwhile, Hob fell into a cave and stumbled upon the iron-bound books of Shumagorath. The bewildered man then beheld a mesmerizing eye in the darkness, which commanded him to unlock the books and read. Entranced, Hob obeyed, and so the Great Old One was freed from his mountain prison. Kulin Goth and Vamatar recited spells remembered from the Ironbound books in an attempt to paralyze the monster until he could be enslaved. However, it soon became clear that Shumagorath would not be contained or controlled by them. The two wizards then attempted to oppose the monster, launching magical strikes against him. But Shumagorath struck back, and the two humans were no match for the demon god. Vamatar was completely obliterated, and Goth's body was torn to shreds. Meanwhile, Conan and his allies arrived and learned what had happened from Hob. The Barbarian was no magic user, and so he took the Ironbound books and tossed them into the storm clouds of Mount Krom, giving them to his god. This caused a large explosion that banished Shumagorath back to his home dimension, presumably thanks to Krom. However, the creature had left his mark on the Earth. In the 1940s, Nazi scientist Arnim Zola discovered minerals in the Netherlands which were infused with magical essence from Shumagorath. Using these minerals, Zola was able to engineer a horrific virus that transformed those infected into shambling grotesqueries. 
Unfortunately, his plans to unleash the virus on a large scale were thwarted by the superhero team, the Invaders, and Zola himself was seemingly killed. However, a small village had already been infected, and with no cure, the inhabitants chose death over transforming into monsters. With a heavy heart, the invaders destroyed the village and euthanized the infected, preventing the virus from spreading further. One of the villagers escaped and survived, but was not contagious and maintained control over himself. Meanwhile, Arnim Zola also survived by having his mind transferred into a robotic body. In the modern age, Shuma Gorath attempted to be reborn on Earth through the mind of the Sorcerer Supreme, Yao, better known as the Ancient One. In the pursuit of this goal, the demon god manipulated other magical and demonic entities such as Nightmare, Sligoth, Ebora, Nagabthoth, Dagoth, Cthulos, and a human calling himself Living Buddha. The Ancient One's apprentice, Doctor Strange, battled these threats. It was here that Strange first learned of Shumagorath, as for him this was before he pursued Sisanej backwards through time. In order to prevent the Old One's rebirth, Strange dove into his master's brain, entering his very mind. After encountering memories and mental manipulations sent by Shuma Gorath, Strange finally confronted the otherworldly visage of the Many-Angled One. Their mystical battle was felt by sorcerers across the planet, but in the end, the only way for Doctor Strange to prevent the rise of Shuma Gorath was to end his master's mortal life. In one stroke, the Ancient One ascended into a higher state of being, leaving his body to become one with the universe itself, while Shuma Gorath was banished back to his home dimension. However, some time later, Doctor Strange was seemingly forced to destroy many of his magical artifacts and talismans to keep them from being used by the alien sorcerer Urthona. For more details on that battle, you can see my video about the history of Rintra. While these mystical items were saved by the Vishanti, Agamotto, their removal from the physical universe collapsed certain protections against the Great Old Ones, allowing Shumagorath to gain a foothold on Earth. He again utilized agents on his behalf, such as Ehrlich Khan and Gassasnir, forcing Doctor Strange to resort to using darker magics against them. Tracking the source of these threats, Strange traveled through dimensions and battled a servant of the Old One, Ariok. Rather than defeat Ariok, Doctor Strange absorbed his power and the two merged into one being. Encountering a manifestation of Shumagorath, this combined entity did battle with the massive tentacled monster. Unable to defeat him in battle, Strange merged with the demon god as well. He then impaled himself with a petrified shard of the monster's own flesh, temporarily destroying it. Strange would feel the consequences of walking this dark path for some time, but the old mage, Anatharmon the Weaver, helped him regain his sense of self. However, as Doctor Strange slowly freed himself of the demonic taint, over time Shumagorath reformed. During this time, Shumagorath attempted to conquer different realities, sometimes by acquiring that universe's infinity gems, but failed while in a diminished state. He later returned to Earth-616 when Nicholas Scratch, the son of the witch Agatha Harkness, tricked the Fantastic Four into summoning him. Scratch intended on sacrificing the Fantastic Four and his own children, Salem's Seven, to the Dark God. However, Doctor Strange transported this manifestation of Shumagorath to Stonehenge and used the mystical energies there to banish him once again. 
Stonehenge is apparently located at the site where humanity first defeated Shumagorath centuries prior, but it's not clear which encounter Strange was referring to when he made this claim. Of course, this was not the end of the Chaos Lord. A much smaller manifestation of Shumagorath was also seen meeting with various other demons, monsters, and hell lords. And when Doctor Voodoo and Doctor Doom were battling each other through multiple dimensions, one of the realms they passed through also contained a manifestation. Meanwhile, the survivor of Zola's virus from the 1940s acquired an artifact known as the Spear of Destiny, and used it to broker a deal with Shumagorath to resurrect his village and replay the events of that fateful day. Because of this ritual, the invaders reassembled and battled their old enemies from World War II, who were made even more powerful by the dark magic. While they were able to defeat the Nazi supervillains, they surrendered to the infected survivor on one condition. If they were given 24 hours to find a cure for the mutated villagers, they would return and allow themselves to be sacrificed in a ritual that would restore the survivor's family. Unable to find an answer to the virus through science alone, one of the invaders, Prince Namor, consulted with his Atlantean science mages. These mages had acquired at least one of the Ironbound books, and so they were able to identify the source of the evil magic. To create a cure, the invaders gathered ingredients with mystical ties to Shumagorath's previous defeats. First was the sacred sea flowers of Sisanej, located in the ruins of Lemuria. Next was hair from the beard of the Ancient One, which they obtained from Wang in the Sanctum Sanctorum. And finally, a fragment from the ancient monument at Stonehenge. The magical cure worked, and the resurrected villagers were returned to normal. The invaders then surrendered themselves to revive the old survivor's family. However, the spirits of his family members refused to take the lives of the heroes in exchange for their own, and returned to their rest. Ashamed of what he had done, the old survivor agreed to stop the ritual. However, due to the spell causing the events of the 1940s to be repeated, Ernam Zola returned with the intention of improving the virus and shot the old man. With the ritual incomplete, a piece of Shumagorath was able to cross over from his home dimension and manifest on Earth once again. Fortunately, the invaders were able to defeat Zola and use the Spear of Destiny to force Shumagorath back. The next time the writhing devourer tried to break through to Earth, it was in Times Square during the events of Infinity. It was during this attempt that the Vampire Hunter Blade reminds us that each time Shumagorath physically manifests in our reality, it is nowhere near the totality of his being. Rather, it is a tiny piece of him, like a fingernail scratching at the fabric of the universe, trying to rip through. This particular manifestation was pushed back by a group of Avengers including Luke Cage, a disguised Blade, Monica Rambo, the White Tiger, the Superior Spider-Man, the Young Power Man, and the Blue Marvel. Later, when a group called the Empirical attempted to wipe out all magic, the Dread Dormammu saved himself by making a deal with them, sending them to battle Shumagorath instead. However, this backfired as the ancient monster survived, and Doctor Strange later transported Dormammu to meet with Shumagorath himself. Since then, this ancient horror has continued to make attempts to break through into our reality. Fortunately, Doctor Strange and Earth's mystical defenders have thus far safeguarded our world from eldritch invasion. In fact, centuries ago, Sir Isaac Newton also battled Shumagorath during his own time as the Sorcerer Supreme, and so far his successors have continued to do so. That's all I've got for you this week, but thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more marvelous content. 
Also, be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you want to hear about next, and as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me, including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!